Hello and welcome to this cryptocurrency technical analysis where together we are going to be jumping straight into the Bitcoin chart today. I'm going to be sharing with you all of the must need to know information and next levels to be aware of trading this market. Of course, we're only on a Monday, so I'm going to get, be getting you ready for the rest of the week to come, preparing you exactly how I am currently trading this and what I am looking for next. I hope that you not only enjoy this video, but can also absorb the information and knowledge that I'm sharing with you and thus increase your level of trading. It's quite a mission for just one video, but nevertheless, I'm going to always give it my all in every video I do and keep it professional and make it just really simple it down and keep it clear exactly what I'm looking at. So, of course, during the month of January, I had been very, very bullish, right? I'm going to sleep most nights, telling my group no short trades, I'm bullish, I'm looking for higher. Even from my last video, right, where I was talking about patience in trading, I was also saying, you know, I'm bullish, I'm long, I'm looking for higher. Of course, I just took the long from that 22800 level. And even at this point, wanted to see higher, okay? Big level up here, you can see the highest level marks on the chart here at around $24,000. I'll be explaining this, of course, during the course of this video. But after that video was released, I even come over on Twitter while we were trading around 23,500. Telling you all, once again, I'm still bullish. I'm still expecting higher prices. I have no short trades open. I'm only in long trades, okay? It was very clear exactly what I wanted, right? I was bullish and I wanted to see higher prices to come. Of course, the higher big level that we had above us was $24,000. Okay, at the time of this tweet, which was at 9 41 p.m. UK time, we can zoom into the chart now a little bit on a lower term time frame and start to see exactly what was going on on this moment of the chart. So we can actually see 9.41 where I was adamant of higher prices to come. I just put a little circle around that and that was right here. Okay, that was right here on the chart on this candle, 9.45 candle. So I was here tweeting, Still expecting higher, want to see higher to come, no short trades open, I'm only in longs. Okay, the big level above me was obviously $24,000. This is the one which I've been telling to my team during the whole course of that week just past 24K, 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 24K. Why was I so adamant that we were going to get 24K? Okay, it all stems from the front run of 24K that happened on the 29th of January. Okay, so on the 29th of January, we front run the psychological big level of $24,000, right? So you can see this is $24,000 here with this line. We topped out at $23,967. So we front run our key level. Okay, this NPOC also at $23,970, reminding that the high was 23,967. Our naked point of control here was also front run by just $3, but front run nevertheless left that as a untapped still NPOC. And well, if you've been paying attention this week at Chart Champions and you, of course you are a contender or a champion, you know I made a video dedicated to educating you on front runs and the statistics behind them. We had an extremely high probability based on that information that I gave you that this was not going to be the high because this did front run our key level. So what we've done here, we moved up towards our key level, missed it. We're ending with a front run with the pullback, but we had to remain bullish during this section of the chart with full faith that we will take out this high and we will get at least $24,000. Take out that psychological level and get higher prices. That is why, my friends, I remain so bullish expecting those higher prices to come because at this moment in time, we had not yet taken out $24,000. So I wanted to see that happen. I wanted to see that taken out. I will tell you, watching this now, I am now in a short trade on Bitcoin. And before people come out here and say, Daniel, here is a print screen of a tweet of you saying you're bullish, of you expecting higher prices, of you saying you are in no short trades, of you saying you're only in longs. That is correct. This is a fact. At this time of the tweet, I was in no shorts. I wanted to see higher prices. And guess what? We got that. I was correct. If I was wrong and we had dropped from here, I would have been incorrect. I would have missed the short trade. But because I was expecting higher prices to come, reminder, at 9.41, when we zoom into the chart, we can see that post and tweet was made here. After that, we did get higher prices to come. That's what I wanted. And my higher price was 24K. I wanted to see that front run abolished. And we did. Thus, for me, there was two acceptable short trades to be had. Well, the wick itself 
or the retest that happened on the 2nd of February. And now I'd like to explain in a little bit more detail why this was and educate you the full reasons behind this short trade that I'm still in right now on Bitcoin. So starting off, I'll take it back a few steps and remind you just how we got up to this level. All stemmed through the bat test once again of that daily at $22,832. Okay, so I'm just going to walk you through this slowly so you can fully understand because I really want you to understand why this high was put in, why I took that short and what that means for price action now going forwards for the rest of the week to come. You need to understand what's happened before you can look at what's happening next to understand market context. So at the time we were just going sideways and I've told my team a few key factors. Of course, when I'm trading Bitcoin, I'm also looking greatly at the stock market, which is our ES that I'm looking at. And also the DXY is another key confluence for us. This is our, you know, our correlated and inverse correlated markets, which weigh greatly on Bitcoin action. So even if I do not trade the stock market, I still want to look at what's happening because I know if the stock market moves, Bitcoin's going to be moving too. Well, there's a very high probability of that occurring, right? So I recognized on the stock market, still with strength, still expecting higher. And for me, if we reclaim this monthly, which happens, my target was 4,200. This is our daily level of resistance. This is a big level on the stock market. So e.g., I've recognized the strength here on the stock market and my next level to the upside of 4,200. OK, so I lay out a few points to my team. OK, at the time, this was our monthly level. I would expect then the large rise to 4,200. Please remember this as it's important for what comes. So starting off here, just emphasizing the fact that we had a big level of 4,200 on the ES, which is the stock market. Again, even though I'm not trading that, I'm looking at it because it's information that's going to help me trade Bitcoin. OK. Then I also go on to talk about the DXY. Had this DXY set up, which was, of course, a short position still, where I wanted to take it below this key level. So if I was wrong, we would have pumped from here. But e.g., I'm waiting for lower on the DXY. This is inversely correlated to Bitcoin. So if the DXY drops, Bitcoin should rise more. OK, this is back on the first. Of course, it's before we got the rise for the retest. So you can see here how I'm expecting higher on the ES and I'm expecting lower on the DXY. And I come up with the opinion that this really would be perfect if it can bring, bring Bitcoin above $24,000. Once again, just reminding people of the target of $24,000. And if the DXY can drop to the target and the stock market can rise to this target, at the same time, Bitcoin's getting $24,000, well, this is a very good short opportunity on the stock market. And of course, the bigger one for me, Bitcoin. So you can see here, I'm laying my plans. I'm understanding my markets outside of Bitcoin. And I'm really ready for this trading plan to come to life. It came to life in the following way. I reminded my team once more. At the moment of speaking, I've taken zero trades on Bitcoin. Nothing. I'm waiting for my levels to be hit. Right now, for me, that was the lower daily level or, of course, $24,000. The lower daily for a long or the $24,000 for my short opportunity should the stock market and hopefully DXY line up together. I'll have a very good short at 24 k or a long if we hit the daily. Well, if you know, if you watched from my last video, the patience paid off. We actually did get this, the lower tap of the daily before a rise to the NPOC at $24,000. It was very nice. And as I say here, simply perfection, patience paid off once again, okay? And it all comes down to, like, speaking about statistics, the way that we see this, we come down, we get a perfect swing failure pattern that activated the long. Of course, at this moment in time, I was still bullish, still expecting higher prices, just recently taken a new long trade. I want to see $24,000. I want to see higher prices to come. At that time, still no shorts and still bullish, looking for above 24 k as explains the reasons why. Okay, so now we start to move on. Okay, we hit $24,000, but we had, of course, the slight front run. So we had that slight front run of the level and a pullback, and our big level was actually missed. Okay, but this actually happened during a champion's live stream. This was a live bit of data and analysis I was doing live in the time, explaining my thought process live as it was happening on a stream to 
my champions community. And I explained why this is not for me a short position. I am not going to short here and I expect higher to come above $24,000. Okay, I explained all of that thought process live as it was happening of why I believed that this front run will not be the high and we will make another high above 24,000 and hit our level. Well, it took nearly one week, but the patience did pay off as I was expecting and predicting 24,000 was broken Okay, on, of course, the 1st and 2nd of February. And upon getting that move up on the 2nd, 1st of February, we also, because of the original high, the 1st, the retest on the 2nd, right? So we then hit our major levels of resistance. That's when we got our tap of our middle of our channel. So we hit our Fibonacci extensions, 2618 extensions, middle of the channel, psychological levels, NPOC, taking out previous highs. This was all perfect, right? So Bitcoin itself had activated a short. But we still hadn't seen at the time DXY and stock market what we wanted. And this is where it come in perfectly. As I mentioned earlier, remember, 4,200 I wanted on the stock market. Well, we got that. Simply perfection. We got the rise above the monthly. Where did we hit? The daily level, 4,200 on the stock market. And what was happening at that time? Well, DXY, remember that DXY setup that I gave? Well, we wanted to see this low taken out. Well, DXY also took out that low. So then we had it all coming together. DXY dropping to the level that I gave of a key level where I wanted to see this come down for the short. We took that out and started to reverse. So with the DXY reversing and moving up, well, guess what? This was all happening at the same time with the stock market, remember 4,200, hitting 4,200, okay? And of course, Bitcoin, remember 24K hitting, coming up here to $24,000. And when we were trading at $24,000, we had the perfect reason to take a bigger short position. And that was because as the ES was hitting 4,200, as DXY was dropping to our support, which I specifically said to my team, if this happens, wow, this is a very good short opportunity, our very good short opportunity, the you know, the, the pieces came together, that each piece of the puzzle that we wanted came together perfectly and aligned. It's, very rare that we see this, but we saw it come together. Each of our three markets hitting the exact levels that I wanted to see at the exact same time that Bitcoin is getting a retest of $24,000 with extreme bearish divergences. Millions upon millions upon millions of longs opening up on the retest, eventually getting trapped, forcing price down lower in a much quicker fashion. But this was what we wanted, okay? 4,200 on the stock market hit. Okay, bearish divergences on the retest with millions of longs opening late into the retest. Perfect. DXY coming down to our lower target and getting hit for the reserve reversal. Perfect. Each step of the way is why I did take that short on Bitcoin. As I explained to my team originally, why I did not short the front run of 20. $4,000 because I was expecting higher. Did not expect that to end in a front run. We got the pullback. We then hit it. And for me, that was why I took that short trade on Bitcoin. Okay. It was just, for me, it's as simple as that. So now I've explained, hopefully in a lot of detail, how I come to these opinions, why I took those trades, why I'm in those trades, and how I trade the charts. I think there's one thing you cannot deny. I can be underlying bullish, underlying bearish, but I'm still going to always trade the charts. Okay. I'm going to take, when I see that set up, I'm going to take it, especially when it's one that I've been waiting a week for, planned out. I knew exactly what I wanted to see. I knew even my other markets, what I wanted to see. And the way it all came down together, well, it, it was it was pretty special. You can see 4,200 stock market, 4,200 hit, pullback. DXY, come down to my key level. Okay, we hit that pullback reversal. So we saw the DXY, we saw the stock market, well, and then we saw Bitcoin hitting 24k retest with those very big bearish divergences. It's just what I call, you know, simply perfect, you know, big, big, big confluence. So yeah, that was nice. And that's why I took that short trade. Okay. And now I'm going to be explaining what I am looking for next. Okay. So of course, now we have seen a, a nice move to the downside here, actually hitting the range value area low. So if we start to pull a fixed range of this, we can see come down to around that fixed uh, range value area low. So very, very nice indeed. Originally, value area high finding some support, then point of control finding support before the wick down onto the value area low. I mean, our levels here are just... <sighs> I don't want to sound like a broken record, but they're pretty perfect, right? Very nice uh, value area levels. 
as it's to be expected in my opinion. This daily is of course now tap. That was our daily tap that we needed to remain patient for to bring us up to 24K, which has been tapped as well. So these are two tapped levels. Okay, now we're left with some new levels that we can examine as I'm gonna explain what I'm looking for next, okay? So I'll explain um, my current trades, which I do think will then aid in the explanation of what I'm looking for next. One, one announcement that I'd like to give before we begin, and that is, uh, you've probably seen uh, some of my tweets talking about rivalry, right? So rivalry is honestly one legendary trader, amazing work ethic and true skill on the charts. Oh, and a massive well trader too. Be sure to check him out. <laughs> and of course, not only is he over on Twitter if you want to check him out, but now it's, it's nice to say at the same time, well, you can see his post from the coach's channel today. This is from one day of posts within his... Uh uh, trading channel. So Rivalry is a coach, by the way, at Chart Champions. And you can see today <laughs> the beast that this guy is. This is one day. And just look how much effort and work this guy put in. This guy's a workhorse. Not only is he a workhorse, but he has proven results to put alongside it. I mean, the guy's a well trader. He's a legendary trader and just, I mean, just pumping out this content. This is crazy. Look at this. Amazing lower term time frame scope trader, very good insights, you know, on the stock market, which is going to correlate along to Bitcoin as well. So I'll just say this, if you want to get involved in the uh, in involved in checking out rivalry, well, he's a new coach in chart champions, along with Severin, uh, who's a bit of a dark horse. Not everyone's heard him, but he's been in the community a few years. Right. And uh, or just over a year. And so these are two new coaches that you can check out if that's of interest to you at Chart Champions. Rivalry and Severin uh, pumping out, pumping out, pumping out content galore. Uh, lots of things to learn here and uh, lots of new content to get stuck into. So if you would like to get involved in those uh, new coaches, as well as understanding, hey, I just done a new front run video. And funny enough, this front run video was absolute key in deciding not to short here live in the time and expecting it to come up higher, which happens. I think this is an absolute key must watch video. Well, that was my latest contenders series released this week. So if you want to get all of that new content, uh, then you can get that, of course, over at chartchampions.com now. So that was my new quick announcement. The new coaches to make you aware of, and I know they're absolutely loved <laughs> members of the community. So a lot of happy smiley faces about that. And also then the second announcement that I've got the new front run video out and that's all released on the website if you want to check that out too. Um, so now moving on to what I'm looking at next. So as mentioned, I'm in a short position from $24,000. From here, I can really simply have my stop loss set and you know, I'm, I'm actually banked profit, whatever happens next in that trade. Um, doesn't mean just because I'm in a short, I've closed my swing long trades. I haven't closed my swing longs yet. So now I'm in, still in my longs from like 16, uh, 17, $18,000. I'm still in those long trades. And I just now also hold a short from $24,000. And from here, I'm just going to remain a little bit patient, right? So I've secured some nice longs. So I can move my stop loss into profits. I've secured also now a nice short, one that I was ready, prepared and waiting for, along with CC Paul. <laughs> and so now I'm in this nice privileged position. How do I get into these privileged positions in trading? It's because I'm one of the, you know, I'm very well prepared and planned for those levels and when they're hit, I'm not scared, I execute. And so from here, I'm gonna remain patient for one of two things. Either my long actually ends up playing out and we get higher prices, and then I'll simply close the short and look for higher, or we do get a large drop from here. And then simply I can close some of those longs and keep the short running. So for me, simply now, there's a few key levels, okay? First, to the downside for me would be around 21,200, 21,100. Okay, so we have this little bit of a zone of support that I'm interested in down and around here, 22K zone, right? Why? Because this is our giving us our range low potential swing failure pattern, failed auction for that. All I would all I would personally be aware of is if we don't find support here and we don't get a failed auction or swing failure pattern, we could get a fairly large drop down into our first area of support, which if doesn't hold, of course, we could see a very, very large drop. And I also think it will be a quick drop as well, right? So a quick large drop to the downside on Bitcoin, uh, should that support not hold. Okay, alternatively, we always, as a professional trader, need to understand the market, and it doesn't can move up and it can move down. I know sometimes people will comment on my videos, Daniel, you're prepared for upside and you're prepared for downside. Please just tell me Bitcoin's going to pump or Bitcoin's going to short. Why are you prepared for both scenarios? And the simple fact is, as a professional trader, we have to be prepared for both scenarios because the market can move 
up or down, right? So I would be naive to only look for up or only look for down. No, I'm looking for up, I'm looking for down, I'm prepared for both. Thus, I can make money if the market goes down and I can make money if the market goes up. I'm not putting anything on a pedestal or scared of biases, I'm just gonna trade the charts. So I've been aware for my levels to the downside. Then my levels to the upside are also clearly marked out here. Uh, to the upside as well. So now for me, because we're not hitting any levels at the moment of interest for myself, I am simply remaining patient for one of my bigger levels to be tapped. Okay, and then from there, when my level is tapped, I can make my next informed trading decision. That's how I approach this market every single day of the week. And that's how I am banking profits consistently every day of the week, right? I'm, I'm on a nice winning streak. It's been a very nice bullish month of January, and I did successfully trade bullish that whole way up, right? From 17 to $24,000. I remained very bullish, was not short in every rise. I was looking to long the dips, you know, and I wasn't this perma bull, shorting, 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 shorting. I successfully traded the uptrends, and you can do that along with me, right? I was openly giving my biases, openly explaining that to you all very clearly. And now, I'm not saying I'm bearish yet, but I am saying that I took a short at $24,000. If I get stopped out of that, so be it, my friends. But I wanted to be prepared and short that level because it was a technical level of confluence that I was prepared and waiting for. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's made sense to you, how I took that trade, what I was looking for, the confluence of my other markets. And I'll say it once again, if you wanna see more from myself, if you wanna see live trading, if you want to get the insights from the new coaches, you can get all of that via the contenders or champions at chartchampions.com. There you will get the access to the new features on the website, the new coaches from Rivalry and Severin, and all of the best content that we got coming out. So yeah, this for myself is going to be wrapping up the video. I hope that you've thoroughly enjoyed. If you have, you know what to do. Hit that like button, <laughs> hit the subscribe, tick the notification bell, all that good stuff. And if you want the real juicy details and get access to the new coaches and their live trading, well, then you can get that from chartchampions.com. Thank you ever so much. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you and goodbye. Ending, of course, as always, with the legal trade disclaimer here, okay? No financial advice. Do your own research at the end of the day and trade on paper demo trade accounts. Cheers, everybody, and goodbye.